We're going to teach in 1 Timothy this morning, chapter 4. 1 Timothy, chapter 4. <clears throat> I don't know how far we get, but we're going to read the, the whole chapter here. Verse 4, 1 Timothy. First one, chapter four. You're right the way. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them of which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused to be received with thanksgiving. Or it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed up in the word of faith and of good doctrine, according to thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself rather to godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore, we both labor and suffer and trust, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach, that no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on the demands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy to them, that thy property may, be, may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for unto the good is, thou shalt go save thyself, and them that hear thee. <coughs> letter to Timothy, the young preacher. Uh, here in verse 1, he's repeating to Timothy the warning that he had given many years earlier to the Ephesian elders. And we can read about that in Acts chapter 20, verse chapter 4, I mean 24 verse 4, says that Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many. <clears throat> and verse 11, And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many, and because of iniquity shall abound, and love of many shall waste cold. So, Jesus is a one of the dangers of this uh, apostasy and uh, the, his departure from faith and, and Jesus 
is uh, warning of it in Matthew there, chapter 24. So, uh, <clears throat> this message that uh, Timothy, I mean, Paul is writing to Timothy in verse 1, says the Holy Spirit speak uh, to Paul, uh, conveying the message from God to Timothy, uh, the young preacher. So, this is all coming from the Holy Spirit. Paul has received the message from the Holy Spirit. It says, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Uh, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit only spoke to the apostles and prophets. It doesn't speak uh, through men today. That all stopped when the Bible was completed. And we've all you know, uh, had lessons on that, been, been taught on that. The Lord speaks to us today through circumstances and through His Word. <clears throat> You don't speak to men uh, in these days in an audible voice. You hear some people going to say, God told me to do this, God told me to do that. Well, he don't do that in an audible voice. He does it through his word and through circumstances. So it all ceased. It was all in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Paul said, all, give us, all these to give us have ceased. Like prophecy, knowledge, tongues, miracles. He went on in verse 9 and say that the Aaron, which he lived, was Aaron, which he knew in part, and prophesied in part. He only said what the Holy Spirit uh, told him to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. He went on verse 9 of this same chapter of 1 Corinthians 13 uh, to say that the Aaron, which he lived, was Aaron, which they have knew not. They knew in part. And prophesied in part, only said what the Spirit told him to say. At that time, there was no completed Bible, and that made it impossible for them to be perfect or mature in spiritual things or receive what the, uh, God wanted them to say through the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> there was no Bible at that time to study. Uh, uh, Paul wrote in verse 10 there, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. When that which is perfect is come, and that which is done in part will be done away with. Uh, the Bible will be completed, and the gifts, these uh, special gifts, will cease at that time. Uh, the ministry of the gifts will give the apostles and no one else. Uh, with the death of these apostles, apostles, which occurred probably about the same time <clears throat> that the Bible was completed, uh, there's no need for the ministering of these special gifts at that time. And no one today has these special gifts of healing the sick and performing miracles. So you see on TV these people, the faith healers and things that they claim that they can uh, heal people and <coughs> perform these miracles. That's all fraud. They can't do that. Only God can do that. Now God does heal Miraculously, but he doesn't. Men don't do it. Uh, they're all frauds. People are being led astray by these people. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 2, David said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. His tongue was used as an instrument, as an instrument to convey uh, the word of the Lord. Again, the message is that they are given through meditation and study of God's word. The Holy Spirit will tell me what to, what to say today. They get their message from God's Word. They contain the knowledge and the study of God's Word. In verse 1 here, where it said, The Holy Spirit speaketh expressly. In the latter days, <clears throat> uh, the speech is expressly meaning it's plain, definite, especially particularly for no misunderstanding of what was to be said. Uh, the Spirit put it plain, as we say today, it's, uh, in plain English. The apostles wrote down what the Spirit taught them that the natural man might understand. So <clears throat> it says the Holy Spirit speaks expressly, plainly. No misunderstanding. It also 
says here in this verse that in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. <coughs> We're in the last last days, we believe now, and uh, that time is here, which the last days uh, started when Jesus uh, came here on earth, gave his life, went back to be with his Father in heaven. But anyway, he speaks of some departing from the faith in these latter days. There's are people that fall, uh, fall prey to these false doctrines, these teachers, and they were the uh, Abandon their Christian faith. These are people that I think profess to be Christians, but they're not. They associate with those who truly believe the gospel. They leave after believing these lies and being deceived, by revealing their true nature. So, read what it says about that in First John chapter two. First John two nineteen says they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So some of these people who were in these churches uh, just there professing no Christ, but they let some uh, false teacher deceive them and. <clears throat> they were believing their false teaching and being deceived. Verse 26 of that same chapter says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. This is a warning to people about these uh, false teachers, people that believe uh, them astray. And it's the same today. And we're living in the last days, as it says. It, <clears throat> it says here that uh, people are not in true sound doctrine. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, chapter 4, verse 2. 2 through 4. It says, preach the word, uh, Paul's uh, writing to Timothy here, young preacher. Be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. And that's going on today of these uh, preachers are not preaching God's word, they're preaching their own doctrines and such so that. Uh, People are, are believing that. People seek after these people. Uh, churches, so called, that have these men's teaching rather than God's teaching, uh, preaching God's word. <clears throat> There's a, a lot of things that a church must teach to be the church of God, the true church of God. I've got a few things written down here that the church must teach the truth. First of all, the church must teach the doctrine of supernatural creation. In Genesis chapter 1 1, God created the heaven and earth. And I was watching the deal yesterday, I was kind of flipping through the channels on TV. They had this deal on about science and, and all their explorations out in space. They said all this was created 4.5 billion years ago. Like they know. They don't have any business out there anyway. That's God's, God's business. But uh, God created the heavens and the earth. And they think, well, some kind of gases got together and exploded and all this just happened. Well, we know that's not true. These asteroids, that's where they were formed and all that. But God created all that. In Genesis 1, 27, He created man in His own image. Uh, this first mental doctrine must be taught. And accept it before the others can follow. If people don't believe that, there's, uh, there's no use in trying to get them to believe anything else. Uh, that's necessary. <clears throat> we must accept the fact that God created all this. Uh, that's probably why Satan uh, exerts a lot of energy against his teaching, because if 
people don't believe this, they're not going to believe anything else in the Bible. I should teach the doctrine of fallen man, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. The serpent deceived Eve, her and Adam ate of the forbidden fruit. Man fell from grace whenever that happened. Romans 5 12 says, By one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all that have sinned. <clears throat> the doctrine of human depravity. Yeah, this humanism thing going on, you know, they say by the nature of having a choice of man to do good, not so with God's word. Man must uh, be told or taught and acknowledge that he is a sinner. Uh, man's nature is wickedness and corruption. Men must know that they cannot please God by nature. That must be preached in God's churches to be a church of God. <clears throat> if men don't know this, they don't realize this or acknowledge this, and they're not going to accept salvation by grace. They must realize that they're wicked. They may not be wicked in uh, the sense of some, but uh, <coughs> said man's nature is wickedness and corrupt. But anyway, it's necessary for one to accept that much of my grace, they must come to the of man came to please God by nature. David said in Psalm chapter 51, 5, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Jeremiah 13, 23, says, Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard change his spots? No. The same token, man can't change his sinful nature. Only God can do that. Fourthly, the church must teach the doctrine of punishment for sins. <clears throat> Preach eternal damnation without Christ. Yes, Savior. Revelation 21 8 said, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable murderers and whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, meaning the second death. If salvation by works is by works, then Christ died in vain. If man can save himself, Christ died in vain. Salvation is a gift from God. We know uh, by reading Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it's a gift from God. A man can't work his way to heaven. John 6, 29 said, This is the word of, work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent, which is Jesus Christ. Man must believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried, rose again the third day for salvation. No other doctrine can be teached, teached, taught in churches for man to be saved. That's the only way one can be saved. It's the gift of God. <coughs> Titus 3 5 says, Not my works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, the remembering of the Holy Ghost. Salvation by grace must be taught in church. Be a true church. Doctrine of repentance. John the Baptist and Jesus both preached the same doctrine of repentance. John in chapter Matthew. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. And Jesus taught the same. Except you repent, you shall likewise perish. In Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Repentance must be a complete change of the mind from evil. Uh, toward God with a godly sorrow for sin and must repent before he can be saved. A lot of preachers nowadays are telling people what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. These church, big churches is just full of people so probably are not teaching the complete truth. First one of our lesson here says <clears throat> Some set apart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The people that's not teaching the truth are preaching the doctrines of devils. <coughs> I 
There's some things here. I got six things listed as fundamentals of faith or pillars of truth to contend for. We just say people need to contend for these things. Uh, one is the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ, and have an uh, earthly father believe in the perfect, sinless life of Christ. Christ didn't have any sin. If he did, he couldn't uh, be a savior for the world. Believe in the miracles performed of Christ, the precarious death of Christ on the cross, where he died as a substitute for our sins. He paid our sin debt on the cross. The bodily resurrection of the dead and the sin of Christ to glory. The belief that Christ is returning, his intimate return. Suddenly, these are things that we must teach, you must contend for us as a believer. <coughs> In chapter 4 here, we're lesson in verse 2, is speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having our conscience seared with a hot iron. He's speaking here again of these false teachers speaking lies uh, and those that have departed from the faith. Uh, said these people might give heed to seducing spirits, moved by demon spirits. Teachers are false doctors, teach just a little truth, and not to confuse people and deceive them. There's enough truth to get people to see. You know, we're talking about the Bible speaking of God creating everything, the evolution. In the schools, they're teaching our kids this evolution stuff and just confusing them. I don't know. The way it is nowadays, it can be hard for a parent to teach their kids the truth. Stuff going on in these schools. But they need to be taught at home the truth, but then they get that at school and it, it, it confuses them. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, we can read here where Paul renounced or gave up the hidden things of dishonesty saying he gave up that kind of life when he was converted. <clears throat> False teachers handle the word of God deceitfully. They trick people. They uh, speak these lies and hypocrisies it says there. They pretend what they're not. They pretend to be uh, God's man teaching, preaching God's word, but uh, they're just false. They're, they're teaching hypocrisy. They're pretending what they're not. <clears throat> Verse 2 there says, goes on to say that their conscience is seared with a hot iron or past feeling. These people <coughs> that teach this stuff, they're not sensitive to what they're teaching. I mean, uh, they're desensitized. They're past feeling. They don't have any remorse or anything for teaching false doctrine. They trick people, make merchandise of them. They don't have any feeling bad about it at all. Talking about from Second Peter chapter two, two verse three. Uh, they strip people of everything they have without any conscious about it at all. They just don't have any conscious. They talk about their feeling being uh, seared with a with a hot iron. You know, if you burn your finger, it kind of gets a, a crust or something on it. You know, you can't have any feeling there but unless you burn real bad. But you didn't burn it, kind of sear it, or as it says, you don't have any feeling there. That's the way these people are about their conscience, about teaching these false doctrines. They trick people and don't have any bad feeling about it at all. Verse 3 here of our lesson says, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which the God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. Nothing will be refused, it will be received with thanksgiving. When I read this verse, I think of Brother Kermit. Years ago, he was preaching. Somebody said, Could he be thankful for a buzzard to eat? Well, I don't think God intended for people to eat buzzards. He said, I guess he could if he could be thankful for it. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't think I could. Anyway, these people, 
that are forbidden to marry. Uh, you know, in Catholic religion, priests and nuns are, are not to marry. And this is a, a doctrine of self denial. You know, they call it asceticism. That's a big word. It's the heading of my Bible there for this, this chapter says apostasy, hypocrisy, and asceticism is uh, predicted. That's what that is, people. They uh, do these things uh, thinking that they're conforming to God's will by abstaining from marrying and not eating meats. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 13, 4 says marriage is honorable in all and a bed undefiled. First Corinthians 7, chapter 7, verse 2 and 28 says marriage is no sin. Genesis 2, 24, God initiated marriage. Matthew 8, 14, we read where Peter had a wife and the Catholics claimed that Peter was the first pope, but he was married, so that kind of contradicts their, their belief there. <coughs> That was all command to abstain from meats, Catholics, and Seventh day Adventists. Uh, they abstain from eating meat. Again, practicing this uh, self denial for religious reasons. Just, it don't make any difference whether you eat meat or not. It's not going to harm you, and it's uh, not going to do anything for you, for God. It's uh, not going to save you, that's for sure. Six here, of our lesson, he says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nursed up in the words of faith and a good doctrine, according to his eyes attained. <clears throat> put the brethren in remembrance of these things. Speak about these false doctrines, these false teachers. Don't get caught up in all their teaching and don't forget it. Says it put it in remember, re, remembrance of these things. He's saying to keep, uh, or he's telling, telling you to keep reminding the people of what kind of people these people are that's teaching this stuff. Uh, and be on guard. Don't let them uh, get to you. Don't get caught up in all that stuff. It says here these things are. What happened in the end of age, and we're in that time. He tells them that he'd be a good minister uh, of Jesus Christ by putting men in remembrance of all these things. He said, by doing this, you know, uh, verse 6 there, if I put the brethren in remembrance of these things, that should be a good minister of Jesus Christ. So, <coughs> Doing this, being nursed in the faith, or the words of faith and doctrine, you know, we must, uh, we need the spiritual nourishment. Uh, daily, the Christian needs spiritual nourishment. There's a lot of Christians that are unnourished spiritually. They don't really have a good knowledge of things in, in the Bible. They don't study the Bible. Probably don't read a whole lot. These people are weak in the faith and sound doctrines. These people can be persuaded by anybody, anyone teaching false doctrine. If they don't know the truth, they can fall for anything. Uh, <clears throat> if a person is spiritually, is not spiritually nourished, they'll be weak spiritually. Brother George mentioned this the other day, one of his messages. The one that you feed the most is the one that's going to be the strongest. You feed your mind spiritually and not with worldly things, but be spiritually minded. You be stronger in spiritual things. He mentioned the white dog, black dog, black dog being sinful, white dog being. God, if you feed 
your mind with all this worldly stuff on TV all the time, radio, whatever, you know, that you're going to be strong in the world and you're all spiritually. So that's really saying we live. We need to be nourished daily in spiritual things. We can be spiritually strong and not, not weak. <coughs> 1 Peter 2 2 said we should desire the milk of the word that we can give. We're grow spiritually uh, to strong meat or deeper truths in God's word. Again, we must receive spiritual food if we're going to be strong or grow spiritually. The Bible says we need to exercise our minds spiritually. <clears throat> Do that by reading and studying God's Word, memorizing verses. That's something I have a hard time with. I wrote stuff down here while I can learn to memorize these verses. I wrote them down, put them in my pocket, like Brother Gar suggested. Read them over and over, and I'm doing pretty good there for a while. But if I lay that card down here in a few weeks, I can remember part of it. I can't remember it all. I don't know where that's old age or this one of mine. My problems remember things. <clears throat> anyway, the Christian must exercise themselves spiritually uh, to be strong spiritually. First sense is exercise ourselves in godliness. Uh, that's what Christianity is all about. Acts 24, 16, to strive spiritually or exercise ourselves to have a good conscience. To not offend God or man. Hebrews 5, 14, to strong me belong to those that are full age or spiritually mature who have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, I uh, read where Paul deals with those that are weak spiritually. They just uh, are not ready for strong meat or strong teaching of the word they need to spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, but not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For you are yet carnal, for whereas there, you among, there is among you envy and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal, and walk as men? First one can speak to you as uh, spiritual, but as carnal. You the babes, because people are not strong spiritually and ready for the, the deeper teachings in God's Word. I'm going to call it right there. Thank you all for coming and sitting there and listening. And I appreciate you being here. I'm going to pray for Brother Kenneth. He comes up here and stands before us here during the preaching hour and brings us this message. Appreciate you. Father, we thank you again for the day, the blessings you uh, bestowed upon us. We thank you for the privilege to come to your house, Father, to worship you, to study your word, sing praise your name, Father, fellowship. We thank you for our church, each member, Father. We ask your blessings on our church here. We ask you to give us uh, wisdom and direction. Help us, Father. Uh, if we carry on here, Father, your work, and we're looking to make some changes, Father. We're downsizing the center property. We just pray to give us wisdom, Father. Lead us in making decisions for your church. Uh, you can be glorified through whatever is said and done here. Now go with these people, Father. Go with us as we continue in this service this morning. Again, bless Brother Kenneth as he comes around and brings this morning message. The saints rest in Jesus' holy name. Amen.